It's boiling hot outside, and the sun is punishing. You're sweating buckets no matter what you do. Record-setting temperatures are all over the country. What can you possibly do to cool down and enjoy the summer? To help you beat the heat, I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own swimming pool out of cardboard. You heard me correctly. A swimming pool out of cardboard. Now the question you might be asking yourself is, why would anyone do this, or why would I want to make this? You're asking yourself the wrong question. The question you should be asking yourself is, do you deserve to have your own swimming pool? Let's face it, to get an above ground or in ground swimming pool is thousands upon thousands of dollars. And even if you had the money, most people don't have a backyard big enough for those kind of swimming pools. So I thought I would come up with an easy solution to show you how to make a swimming pool for yourself at a very low cost compared to those other pools and you can make it as big or as small as you want it and enjoy it on your terms. So of course to get this craft together we need the number one most important component and that is cardboard. Lots and lots of cardboard. Now what you're looking at here is that I got just sheets upon sheets of cardboard. Now, the reason, one thing you might be asking yourself right now is, well, yeah, you got this big cardboard, but why not use wood instead? That wood would be probably stronger, more versatile. And the answer to that question is cost. This is all free. Cardboard is free. Wood, based on the size of my pool, is going to cost you a lot of money. And the whole purpose of this craft is to keep it as inexpensive and cost effective for you as possible. So I suggest going to your local home improvement store, grocery store, even going to distribution centers and warehouses and asking them for cardboard. I got this from a warehouse. I just went up to them and asked them if they have spare cardboard. And this cardboard is used to separate um, skids of products. So they gave me about 60, 70 sheets of this stuff completely for free. The more cardboard you can get, the better it is. Now two very pivotal parts of the scrap is the glue and the coating that we're going to use. So to glue the cardboard sheets together, you need a strong industrial strength contact cement or any other type of really strong paintable type glue that you can get your hands on. This is just one brand that I picked up on sale, but you need contact cement and get a big can of it because you're going to need a lot of it. And then secondly, you want a rock coating. There's rock granite. I discovered this product just a little time ago, and this is what we're going to use to coat the walls and the bottom of the pool to make them strong, durable, and water resistant. As I said, there's many different varieties out there, but get the rock coating and the contact cement. These are necessary to get this pool done. Also what you need to get is a polyurethane construction adhesive, like industrial premium strain, and a lot of duct tape. The duct tape is gonna be used to, just as insurance, to cover up all the seams and openings that might exist, or especially around the edge of the walls. Because even though we're coating the outside and the surface, it's the perforated openings on the edge and where the, um, the boards are glued together that might be the weak points. So duct tape is just insurance. And with this industrial strength adhesive, which is different than contact cement, the stuff is a lot stronger and thicker. This is what we're gonna be using to stick the wood frame or the skeletal frame inside the walls and on the surface of the pool to make sure that it keeps its integrity and strength. Now with any pool that you, you see out there or that you make, you need a way for water to escape fill it up with water and even you know what we're going to be able to attach a water pump to this so what I went is to a home improvement store and I got some plumbing accessories now it's completely up to your discretion which ones you want to get but uh, these ones are what they're called PVC sewer pipe and what was important to me is that I got accessories that had uh, tops that screw on and off that have a waterproof seal and that they're hard plastic so I could glue them into place so these two here that I got for like a dollar each, these are going to be for the water pump. This one here is going to be for letting the water escape out the back of the pool to drain it. And then I also got this with a valve so we could actually attach a hose and fill it from the top of the pool. And really all that's left that you need is just the minor utensils that you probably have around the house anyway. So cutting blades for exact cuts, paint brushes, rollers, measuring tape. Once you have all your materials together, we're going to make ourselves a pool. 
Okay, so the first thing you need to assess is the size of your backyard. This is my backyard. The pool is going where you can see the measuring tape. And depending on how big your backyard is and how big you want your pool, the final size to be, you measure out the space that you want it to occupy. So the measuring tape over there is showing you the 96 inches that I intend by my pool length to be. And then with my light fixtures here, I'll show you where it's going from the fence. So it's going just up until my concrete patio. And here is a, might be hard to see, but here's my makeshift diagram. I have made my own calculations based on how big I want the pool to be. So it's gonna be 108 inches in width, which is about nine feet by 96 inches in length, which is eight feet. So to get this going, what we're gonna do first is the walls to surround the pool. Now, what we have here is it's standing up uh, 47 inches on the boards, and what we need to do is glue them together. There are two ways to do this. The way I'm going to use is called the overlap method, but the other way that you might think of doing this double corrugated is by taking the individual sheets, gluing them together like this, taking another two individual sheets and gluing them together like this, and merging them in this part here and gluing this together. I don't like this method because it puts all the strain on where the glue is going to be going right here. And with the pressure of the water, we don't want that. So instead, what we're going to do is an overlap, which is glue each one halfway on top of the other one, so there's no pressure on any particular joint, and that there's always a board behind another board to keep it intact. So here's an example of uh, my overlap method. As you can see here, these two boards are glued together, and here's the edge of one board and the edge of the other board, so there's no actual pressure point. So we're just going to keep on overlapping all the boards together, for the whole entire wall and then glue it together from there and therefore we have no pressure points and then we can move on to coating it and then working on the bottom part. To glue down each section of the pool walls, once you divide them in half, you coat one half in the contact cement, but as much of it as you need, just make sure you coat the whole entire half. And once fully coated, then you simply evenly and carefully press down another cardboard piece on top of it. And once that piece is down, you flip it over and do the other half, and you just continue and repeat until you have all parts of your wall complete. So we now have all four of the pool walls all glued up together at the dimensions that we need. Now the next step is to put duct tape along the seams where we glue them and especially on the tops and bottoms. Now the reason why we're putting duct tape here is prior to putting down the coating, we want to just ensure that we protect the weakest points of the wall. And the most exposed point is actually the top and the bottom, where even when we coat it, there is still gonna be some openings and perforations. So the duct tape is just that extra insurance to ensure that um, every part of the wall is protected. Okay, so just to give you an example of um, the duct tape, as you can see, the edges, the seams, everything is duct taped together just to protect the edges and the weak points. Okay guys, before we put on the uh, skeletal beams and rock coating, I just want to show you the walls as they are right now. Here they are, as you can see, they're all taped up. These are the smaller walls, duct tape all around, all the edges, all the seams are protected. As you can see, I've already put the holes in. Here's for the water drainage on another small wall here. That's the hole for to fill up the pool. And then over here, you can see one, and on the other side, the same wall too, for the water pump. Okay guys, I had to bring uh, part of this craft indoor. It's raining on and off outside. Uh, you can't predict mother nature sometimes. So uh, I covered up the big walls, but this is the two smaller walls that are 96 inches. But what I wanted to do is show you how I was doing the skeletal frame with uh, the wood beams that I bought. So as you can see, I put them around the edges, so there's one side, here's the bottom part that will glue to the base, and then here's the other wall, and then in the middle I also put a wood beam just to help with the integrity of the wall and keep it strong and rigid. I found that leaving it on the heat and the sunlight, you know, I covered it, it was starting to warp the cardboard and we don't want that. So even before we put the coating down, we put the, I glued down using the industrial wood glue that I have. Uh, the PL Premium, I glued this all down, I'm letting it set for a few hours, do this with the other wall, and then once the sun comes out, I'll finish the bigger walls. 
Okay guys, so as you can see, we got our skeletal frames done. And what you just saw there is that we put some of the hard rock coating down onto the surface. So what we're gonna do, and this is the major important step to waterproof uh, the walls and turn our cardboard into actual walls of a pool that can withstand water. We're gonna put the rock coating down. And all you need is a roller and paintbrush to do it. And we use a paintbrush just to get the, the parts near to the skeletal frame and then we use the roller to actually just slather it on. Now, I have two different colors. As you can see, this was like an aqua blue. That's going to go on the inside of the walls. And then I have another color that's going to go on the outside. And I was advised by a professional uh, who uses this rock coating stuff that you want to put a sealer on it just to ensure that it doesn't crack because of course in a pool it's going to expand and contract with the heat of the sun and the fullness of the water. So this is just extra insurance. To get ready on the base, we first need to have a stable, flat surface to put it on. Now, I'm fortunate enough that uh, if you saw my video with the world's largest board game, that I had these massive 48 inch squared uh, playing pieces. So what I did is I took those playing pieces, they're already varnished and water protected. I cut one of them up and I laid them out for the length of the pool and that's what the base is going to go on to. Now the base of course is the floor of the pool that we have to attach to the walls. Now originally I was going to use those big cardboard sheets that I made the walls out of for the base but uh, luck was on my side. I actually went around kept on shopping for cardboard and what you're looking at here is a massive complete piece of cardboard. It folds up but it's all one piece and this was an industrial air conditioner and the size of this thing is 128 inches length by 75 and a half inches in width. That actually leaves me with an extra 20 inches that I could cut off the length and add to the width to make it the actual size of my pool. To get the base ready, I duct taped all the seams anywhere that was bent or cracked and the corners. And then I'm gonna put the hard rock coating about a few layers on and from there we could actually put the walls up. Okay guys, so what you're looking at is that, as you can see, it's coming together. Now the next stage is to actually put the walls and connect them together. This is going to be a little bit tricky because uh, there's already a complication that the heat of the sun is causing the base to warp. So i got to do this very quickly. You might want to get a friend to help you out with this stage. But what we're going to do is start connecting the walls together, joining them up, gluing them together. So at least we'll have the base set. And then from there, we can do the fine touches and putting the glue just uh, in every crease and corner just to make sure that everything is locked in. We put all the walls up and we put the, the glue, industrial strength glue to help it bind together. I put down some clamps on each corner and this is not close to being finished but what we're doing is just to get the, the, the pretty much the dimensions of it together. And then once we let the glue dry then I'm going to actually fill every nook and cranny with glue and with some caulking to make sure that there's no holes or openings. And one thing I've already discovered is when I was trying to put water here to fill it up the first time that there were little leaks around the perimeter. Nothing major, but little leaks were occurring. So I wanted a way to patch them all off and ensure that no future leaks will happen. And that's when I discovered this. It's uh, like a super strength cement. Very inexpensive and all you have to do is add water to it. And so I got two boxes of this for less than $10. And as you'll see, I had enough to put around the whole entire perimeter of the pool to ensure that it bonds, it seals, and no water is getting through any of this. It's time to put in the plumbing fixtures. So as you can see here, I have the spout for where the holes are going to be attached to. So we can fill up the pool. And then with these holes down here, this is where the water pump will go if I decide to use it. And I'm going to put some glue around the edge and just stick it in. And of course, on the back side, I'm going to do the drain to it. Alright guys, so I made all the alterations to the pool that I think I can make. I patched up everywhere I could possibly patch up. It is a nice warm Saturday and I decided, you know what, I'm going to fill it up about halfway to show you that the water can stay in this pool and then it can be used. And from there, that's it. Our pool is done. Some things you need to remember when doing a craft like this. A, the sun will warm it more than water will. So after you drain it, try to put covers or tarps over it to protect it. You always want to be checking to see if there's any warping or bulging. Because again, this is made out of cardboard, it's not indestructible. And even on that note, you don't want to rough house or be too rough with this pool. Now, I made my walls double corrugated. It probably is more beneficial, especially with young kids, to make it five times corrugated, five pieces of cardboard together to make it stronger. But again, this is up to you. I just want to show you an example that this can be done. Simply because I said to use rock coating, it doesn't mean that that's all you can use. If you could find industrial wax, if you could find any type of coating that is 
cost effective and will help protect your pool, by all means use it. The rock coating is just something I happen to stumble upon. I thought it would be cool to use it and try it for this craft. But please, be open-minded. Use whatever you feel is best to do this. As I mentioned, you could attach a water pump to this and it will circulate water and chlorine and help keep the pool clean from bugs and anything else that gets in there. But of course, I just use a set size of plumbing fixture, but it's up to you to figure out how to manipulate it so any pump can fit to it. Alright, so there you have it. I'm just giving you a sense of the pool with the water inside of it. Now, I'm doing it now before it fills up because this, just to get to this level, actually took around two hours. So just to get to halfway point, we're looking at another two to two and a half hours because of course it is quite big. But at least this gives you a sense. It's holding the water. So I hope all of you have fun making your own swimming pools. Again, this is just my rendition of it. It's just to put the idea into your mind. I want you guys to put your own spin on this, create your own swimming pool how you want to create it. Hope you guys have fun, that you work with your friends and family, and just make the craziest swimming pool that you can do for yourselves. So all you who know my channel, this is what I do. The Homemade Game Guru channel is about creative madness, thinking of things that you've never thought of about before. And you know I'm going to come back with even more videos. And for any of you who's new to my channel, please click on one of the options that are there. I have so many other ideas out there to share. You guys take care. I'll see you when I come out with my next video.